dear brothers and sisters, today the Holy Orthodox Church commemorates a remarkable saint, Saint Mary of Egypt. Her icon is in the center of the church, along with that of the resurrection of our Lord. Saint Mary coming from Egypt, lived a very sinful life. She left her home at an early age, basically ran away, and lived a life of, of a harlot. Sensual pleasures, food and drink, she lived for the sake of pure pleasure. And she longed at one time to see and to venerate the life-giving cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and wanted to go into the church to venerate the all-precious wood. But she felt that there was some power preventing her from entering the church. She appealed to the Mother of God whose icon she saw on the wall and it was granted to her, finally, to go into the church. She repented of her sins, and she heard a voice from the Mother of God saying that if you want peace, cross the Jordan. And she crossed the Jordan, entered into the desert, and lived there for 40-some years. She forsook everything. Her repentance was was extreme. She took with her only the clothes that were on her back and two loaves of bread that she bought. Ultimately she became naked and lived eating wild herbs and plants and whatever she can find in the desert. And she spent all of her time in prayer and in fasting and in struggling to overcome all of the remnants of her sinful life, all of her memories, all of her habits. And she struggled and struggled. She said for 17 years, the demons would not let her go. But finally, she found peace. Today on this fifth day, Sunday of the Great Fast, the Church brings before us her memory to remind us about repentance. Looking at her life, we may see, think to ourselves that we have very little in common with her. But what was the, the source of her actions? She ran away from home she wanted to follow her will. She was full of pride. She thought to herself that she could make it on her own. And then, by following that, that took root and bore fruit of all kinds of pleasures. She felt deep in her soul that she had no peace because she was following her rules, her own will, disobeying her parents breaking the commandments, and so she strove to find peace in her soul by living it up, by giving in to all the pleasures of the flesh. And that didn't give her peace. <coughs> that didn't give her peace either. And she finally came to the realization that the only true peace comes from God. Only true harmony in our life comes from God. She realized that living according to her own ideals, living only according to the demands of the flesh, would ultimately lead to the death of her soul, would ultimately lead to complete death once her body would die. The times may have changed, brothers and sisters, 
but sin is still sin. The circumstances may be different, but we all struggle from time to time with wanting to follow <coughs> our will, with disobedience, with gaining pleasure from physical, sensual pleasures, eating, drinking too much, too much entertainment, and all these things lead and give fruit to other sinful activities. But Mary's story, Mary's life, shows us that repentance brings a greater good. In today's Gospel, we heard about this woman who came to Jesus in the Pharisee's house and sought and tried to show her love. She showed her love to our Lord by washing his feet with her tears, tears of repentance, but also tears of joy that she was forgiven her sins. And she anointed his feet and showed her love. Saint Theophon the Recluse says, what is remarkable about today's Gospel reading is that this woman said absolutely nothing. She showed her love, not by words, not by intentions, not even by thoughts, but showed her love in actions. And Christ says, those who are forgiven much, love much. And those who love much, likewise, are forgiven much. And in other words, for us, we show our love in action. We show our love in obedience to God's will, in following His commandments, of putting Him first in our life, of striving to have His grace transfigure our entire being, and to direct us according to His will. We show our love by living not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Not to give in to the demands of this world, but meet our responsibilities, but don't live for the sake of material pleasures, but rather live and bear our responsibilities and our difficulties for the sake of communion with God. That's where we all find similarities with Holy Venerable Mary of Egypt. We all strive to show our repentance, to show our love in action. And when we show our love in action, we are forgiven much. So brothers and sisters, let us continue this great fast. There are two weeks left. Let us strive to make the changes in our life, not just for these next two weeks, but make the changes now so that they take root, so that they can blossom after the great and holy Pascha and continue throughout our days. Just as St. Mary struggled to overcome her sins and with God's grace and with his love and compassion. She reached a point where whenever she prayed, she was even lifted up above the ground. She walked on water because her entire being was then transfigured by God. She loved much because she was forgiven much. We all strive for forgiveness, brothers and sisters. We all know we have shortcomings. God does not call us to mediocrity. He calls us to the great heights of repentance, to the great demands of love, to holiness. And he gives us so many examples like that of St. Mary to show us that it is possible for us to show our love in action. It is possible for us to repent and to change our lives with His grace. No matter how deeply seated our habits are, no matter how difficult it is to root out our thoughts, 
no matter how hard it is to change. God gives us the grace so that we may struggle and overcome. Through the prayers of the Holy Venerable Mary, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us, sustain us, and save us. Amen.